Welcome back. We are off on our next module, Active Directory Domain or Certificate Services, after spending some time on Active Directory Domain Services. We're going to dive right in and get an overview of Certificate Services, what it is, what it does, and how it works a little bit. ADCS, what is it? What does it do for us or provide for us? Overview of Active Directory Certificate Services. As I mentioned before, when I started off this course, ADCS is relatively, in theory, simple. All it does is manage certificates. That's it. However, to get to the point where managing certificates, with all of the things certificates do and how they can do it, how important they are, and the infrastructure possibilities for managing them, it is a complicated piece of technology in, in any environment. Overview of Active Directory Certificate Services. What is a certification authority? How hierarchies work? Options for implementing? Options for integrating CS and domain services that we just learned about? And a demonstration, some of the tools. What is a certification authority? It's an entity entrusted to issue certificates. That's it. It is, in this instance, essentially a computer that we have said this computer is going to be allowed to issue certificates to individuals or users, computers, servers, the organization, network devices in some cases, if necessary or required or requested. These certificates verify the identity and other attributes of the certificate subject to other entities. Now, a lot of this module is going to actually be spent on PKI as an idea and not so much on the technicalities behind Active Directory Certificate Services, only because that background is very necessary for how the pieces of Certificate Services work. Once you have that background, Certificate Services is much, much simpler. Not that it is simple overall, but it is simpler once you have an idea of PKI. How CA hierarchies work. They include a root CA or Certification Authority and one or more levels of subordinate CAs optionally. You don't have to have subordinate CAs. There are plenty of reasons for deploying more than one. All of them listed here. Usage, oh, go back. Certificates may be issued for a number of purposes. Secure email, secure web servers, pure user verification, identity verification. You may want to segregate your certification authorities to issue certificates just for those particular uses. Organizational divisions, as we talked about earlier, you might have a number of different organizations or teams or groups within your overall organization that have different functions, different requirements, different IT teams even possibly, and you need those teams to independently manage certification services. Geographic divisions, that one is very similar to organizational divisions, but physical geographic locations. Load balancing, I might want to make sure that I don't overwhelm any one certification authority with requests, with revocation, with management. So I may have a number of different certification authorities, uh, a number of different servers in the hierarchy to provide for that, that load balancing. High availability. There are key crucial servers in Active Directory Certificate Services that have to be available. You have to have them for it to function correctly. Without that, you lose the validity of the certificates that are attempting to be verified, and your certification is, is essentially for naught. And to restrict administrative access, just like everything in Microsoft software and tools, we have the ability to very, very granularly control delegation of administration. I can allow different users of different types or different administrators of different types to manage different aspects of the infrastructure, and that may be a reason to have different uh, hierarchies within my certification authority. When implementing a certification authority solution, you can use an internal private CA or an external public CA. These are very different options. An external public CA, I don't manage. I send a request for a certificate. That's pretty much it. I go to any major commercial service. I say, I want a certificate for purpose X. 
here's the information that pertains to that certificate. Depending on what that certificate is or how important it is, there may be independent verification provided by that third party that I am who I say I am, and then they're gonna issue me a certificate. A very good example of this would be any public website secured with SSL, HTTPS at the beginning of a URL. Those certificates are issued by third parties. The reason for that is that every computer is deployed with a preset list of trusted certification authorities in the world that certificates issued by will be valid. If I create my own internal private certifi certification authority, I don't have that trust built into the system. I can't create a website, attach a certificate to it that I've issued myself, have someone from outside of my organization go to that website and have them not get a certificate error. Their computers don't have a store of my internal certification authority and its trust to the world. That's our biggest difference between these two. Internal CAs are less expensive and provide more administrative options, but the issued certificates are not trusted by external clients. The world at large doesn't know about them. Uh, I personally use a mix of both of these in my day-to-day -day operations, even at home. I host some websites for myself and for associates of mine. I've used external certificates for some. I've self-issued certificates for some. Options for integrating Active Directory certificate services and Active Directory domain services. Enterprise and standalone. These are the two types of certification authorities you can stand up in Active Directory certif certificate services. A standalone cert uh, certification authority is a server you install the role on and you can issue certificates. It is that simple. What you lose out on is what's in the enterprise column. You don't have group policy for trusted root propagation, and I'll have to explain that for a moment. As I mentioned, every computer, when built, when deployed, with, in this case, we'll stick with Microsoft Windows operating systems on them, there is a list of trusted certification authorities worldwide built into that operating system. My internal certification authority isn't on that list by default. So for me, to be able to use certificates that I've issued internally without having trust issues, I can use group policy. I can populate that trusted list on all of those workstations with my certification authority. It tells those clients any certificates issued by me are to be trusted. That's our first advantage of an enterprise CA. Publishes certificates and CRLs to ADDS. This is one we're gonna to have to learn more about as we go through this module. The simple explanation is certification authorities maintain lists of certificates that have been revoked and clients check those lists to make sure that when they're getting a certificate as validation of um, identity, that they're still valid, that they are still legitimate certificates. I can use Active Directory to store and distribute that list as opposed to other mechanisms built within certification. Can enforce credential checks during enrollment uh, if I want to get a certificate, I can make sure that I, Christopher Chapman, am the one getting that certificate and not someone else pretending to be me getting a certificate with my name on it. Can have subject name generated automatically from logon credentials. This has to do with certificates matching. When issued a certificate, the name being verified has to match the subject name of the certificate for it to be valid. Certificate templates. Those are preset templates for preset purposes that I can either decide to issue or not issue and control different options of. And we'll talk about that more in, in further slides. Can be used to generate smart card Windows domain authentication certificates. I can't do this without Active Directory domain services. I have to have an ADDS integrated CS implementation to do smart card Windows authenticated logon and can use certificate auto-enrollment. What this means is, as a user or as a computer, I can designate that when that computer comes online, it automatically gets a certificate for whatever purpose I might want one for. We are going to install this role. I'm gonna jump into a demo real quick and install the role, and then we're gonna take a look at the tools for managing right off the bat. And here we are in the demo environment. This is a server I've prepared ahead of time. 
It has the domain services role pre-installed, but not certificate services. We're gonna go ahead and run through that installation just so you can get a look at what it, uh, what it takes. We're gonna click on add roles and features in the server manager window. Brings up our, our prerequisite information box. It is again a role-based installation and it is on the local server. We're going to install Active Directory certificate services. As per other installations of Active Directory roles, there are prerequisite features that have to be installed. Server Manager warns us about these features and lets us know what it's going to be installing. And next, brings up the features window, again with those features asked for in the prior step already pre-selected. Another information screen, just letting us know a couple of things. There is a note right here that's relatively important. The name and domain settings of this computer cannot be changed after a certification authority has been installed. If you want to change the name, join a domain, or promote this server to a domain controller, complete these changes before installing the certification authority role. We're going to go ahead and continue forward. We're not planning on making any changes during this course to the name. These are the role services. I am going to install most of these. All of them come with additional features. So we're going to have to click this a couple of times. And if I remember correctly, I can't actually install or can't configure all of these right away after this installation is done. We'll look at that once they're installed. Another information screen. This has been put here as a as a requirement of the features that we just got selected. As I selected the roles, it gave me prerequisites. IIS was on that list of prerequisites, so a step has been added to the add roles and features wizard in that process. I can once again make changes, but the options that I absolutely need for certificate services have already been selected. I can restart automatically if required. I'm not gonna select that. I'm just going to install. Uh, this wizard, again, as mentioned in prior modules, we can close the wizard without interrupting any tasks. Once it's gotten started, I can close this. The installation is going to continue in the background independently of anything I'm doing. I am going to switch over to another computer that already has the role installed because we don't need to wait for this portion. So here I have a server up and running, server manager open that has ADCS already installed on it. Same dashboard window, it's gonna give us servers with this role installed, in this case there's just one, and any events that have happened in regards to this particular role or service. Uh, unlike Active Directory, we had the Active Directory Administrative Center, it's a new tool that Microsoft has provided to centralize management of the Active Directory tools provided. Certificate services, we still have a number of different tools to use. The complication with these tools or talking about these tools is that they're actually very dependent upon each other. The first one I've opened is the certification authority tool. It's connected to the local machine right here. And this is all it gives us. Certificates that have been revoked, certificates that have been issued, requests for certificates, failed requests, and the templates that this certification authority is currently authorized to provide. It's relatively basic. This is our, our main source of information about our certification authority. So from here, we've seen what these options are for. The next step of management actually stems from this console. On certificate templates, right click, there's a manage option. What that's going to do is it's going to open up another console in a new window for managing our certificate templates. It's in this console that I can modify the certificate templates that can be issued by my certification authority. This is another slightly complicated step in that I don't select which templates to issue from here. 
This, for instance, is where I would modify a web server certificate, template, properties, and I could make changes to some options in here. For instance, there are no computers in here, so I can't issue a web server certificate to a web server directly. I could modify that. I could add computers and I could select a computer to issue a certificate to. So server DC is in that list. Enroll or I'd add a server web or whatever the name of my web server is. Select the enroll option. Click OK. All I've done is change the template. I still can't issue that certificate to a web server. I then have to return to my certification authority, right click on certificate templates again, new template to issue. This lets me select from those templates which one I want to issue. Now in this case, I already have a web server certificate here. So I would actually have to remove the one that exists and then reselect it with the changes to issue that certificate template. Again, not going too deep into this. This is another topic that we could spend days and days on if we wanted to. So our tools so far, we've looked at the certification authority tool. We've looked at the certificate templates tool. Now we want to look really quickly at certificates themselves. If I'm a user or I want to look at the certificates issued to a server, a domain controller, whatever the case may be, how do I find that information? The quickest way is to open up the Microsoft Management Console. A run window, a command prompt, or just the start button and type MMC. It's going to give you your MMC option, your Microsoft Management Console option, and you can launch it. Now it's empty. There is no out of the box button icon option for opening just a certificates snap in. You have to open the MMC and add the snap in. And the reason for that is that when you add the certificate snap in to a management console, you get to select your scope. What do you want to manage certificates for? Yourself, a select service, or a computer. I'm going to go ahead and say my user account in this instance just for the sake of the demo. And now I get a view of the certificates that have been issued to me as a user. In this case, file recovery. That's all I have. The list I mentioned earlier of third party certification authorities out in the world that issue certificates that my computer or my account trusts automatically exists right here. Trusted root certification authorities. Certificates issued by any of these organizations that are used to verify identity or encryption or whatever the case may be, I'm going to trust those certificates if they're issued by these issuing certification authorities in the world. Now in this case, I have additions. This is my certification authority. It's been added here automatically because it's an enterprise certification authority. My domain, as soon as I installed it, issued out a policy to add this authority to this list for my internal users and computers. If I were to add the snap in for the computer that I'm using, you see the same list. In personal, you're going to see something a little bit different. Because this server is a certification authority, it's been issued a certificate by itself to issue certificates, if that makes sense. To issue a certificate, you have to be issued a certificate by a certification authority. In this case, because it's an internal certification authority, we've issued that ourselves. We also have client authentication as a domain controller and a web server certificate that I created and installed as part of the deployment of the web enrollment role, which we'll talk about in future slides.
I'm going to not save this console and we'll come back to that later. The only other tool we have for managing Active Directory certification or certificate services is the online responder snap-in. An online responder is an alternative to a certificate revocation list. I'm just going to show you the tool. You can take a look at it. We haven't covered what this topic is or what certificate, certificate revocation lists are yet. So we'll come back to this in a later demo and take another look. And there is one more I did forget to mention. I'm going to open a console one more time. And we're going to add one more snap in. This is a tool left over or not left over, but uh, that's been in use by Microsoft for some time since the server resource kit was issued back for server 2000, I do believe used to be called PKI View and is now called Enterprise PKI. This is basically a monitor for your certification authority. All this tells you is information about your certification authority. It tells me that the certificate's good, it hasn't expired. It tells me locations for certificate revocation lists. These are all topics we're going to cover in subsequent lessons, but this is just a quick view at a tool that gives me a health check of my certification authority and my, certi my entire PKI at this point, my whole public key infrastructure in my organization. We're going to jump back into our presentation and continue on. So we covered certification authority, certificate templates, the online responder, which we'll come back to, enterprise PKI, and certificates themselves. Understanding Active Directory certificate services certificates. This is where we go more into the theory behind this technology. What these are, what they do, why we use them, and then at the end we'll tie these tools back together into how they manage these certificates and what they're used for. Digital certificates, it's a file. It's a file that has two parts to it. Basic information about the certificate and the holder, name, location, organizational information, and a key. This on this slide says public key. It's not always a public key. It may be a private key. But these are the two parts to any digital certificate, digital file. Public keys are distributed to all clients who request it. Private keys are stored only on the computer from which the certificate was requested. If I happen to have a web server and I want that web server to provide SSL encrypted services to the world, I'm going to get a certificate for that server that contains basic certificate information as outlined on the slide and a private key. There's also going to be with that a file containing the same information and a public key. That is what goes out to the public when they access that web server for the sake of making sure that data is encrypted before it's transmitted to my web server. We're going to cover that in more detail actually right now. I set up a web server. I request a certificate. I'm issued a certificate. I install that certificate onto the web server and it's available to the world. When a user requests, and this works both directions, requesting or submitting information, that information is in plain text. The private key is used, well, either the private or public, depending on the direction you're flowing, are used to encrypt that information. It then, as you see here, is SSL encrypted. That's what you see. If A good example of this is any website collecting personal information which hopefully should be using SSL, and if it's not, you probably shouldn't be submitting personal information, should have SSL enabled, HTTPS at the top, the lock in the status bar, and what it's doing is it's encrypting this information with a key. I can decrypt that information on my end to read it, or I can use the public key to encrypt it if I'm submitting, and then the private key is used to decrypt it 
before it's actually sent onto the web server on the back end. But as it transits the public internet between these two sources, it's encrypted and cannot be read by third parties. It's a, a very broad overview of the process, in this case, of just a web server certificate. I am going to do a quick demo, similar to the web server explanation I just gave, but a little bit different in that it's going to allow me as a user to witness more readily encryption using digital certificates. So as the administrator on this computer, I'm going to open up the MMC that I had open before. so that we can take a look at the certificates that have been issued to me as a user. My user account, and OK. And again, prior, all we saw was this, file recovery. I'm going to minimize this, and we'll come back to it in just a minute. I'm going to create a text document. And in that document, I'm going to put some extraordinarily confidential information that no one else should ever be able to read except me and those that I designate. Save and close. One of the sort of basic functions of Windows and has been for a long time is the ability to encrypt individual files. In advanced, on my general tab, in the properties of my data, encrypt contents to secure data. And I click OK and OK again. You're encrypting a file that's in an unencrypted folder. If this file is modified, the editing software might store a temporary unencrypted copy of the file. I'm not going to get into the technical details of that, but it is possible if you're editing a document in an unencrypted folder that a temporary copy of that document is actually what's modified by the software and is accessible in the meantime. It gives me an option right here, encrypt the file and its parent folder. I've got this on the desktop, so I'm not going to do that. This is a smaller demo. We don't have to worry about that in this case. And it's done. Nothing really appears any different. If I come into advanced, it is encrypted. What's different is I now have a new certificate. As soon as I encrypted that document, I was issued an encrypting file system certificate. The process by which EFS works in terms of encrypting the document, all of the algorithms used and the process is a well-documented process. We're not going to cover it in this course because, again, it is at a much technically deeper level uh, knowing those steps and what they should be or what they are in this case. So we won't get into that. But this is a great demonstration that pretty much anybody can do on having a certificate issued and having it used to encrypt contents of a file. And on to our next topic, certificate templates. This is one that we talked about a few minutes ago. We saw the tool used to manage templates and very briefly looked at one of those templates and how to modify some of its settings. Certificate templates and what they are, they define what certificates can be issued by a certification authority. They define what those certificates are used for and how they're used in some cases. Within those roles, there are other options you can set. Define which security principles have permission to read and roll and configure the template themselves. There are a number of different templates. We saw one just now issued to the administrator, a basic encrypting file system certificate. Earlier, we saw me modify a web server certificate. Those are just two of the examples of a number of examples that exist in that certificate template snap-in of the types of certificates we can issue, modify, and decide to use or not use in our enterprise. Implementing certificate enrollment and revocation. So 
once we've got our certification authority up and running, we've created our templates, we've modified our templates, we've published our templates to that certification authority. We now have to set up how do we want users and computers to get those certificates and how do we want to make sure those computers and users know when other certificates have been revoked or have been canceled essentially. Certificate enrollment is the process of getting a certificate from a certification authority attached to your user account, a computer account, or a service. There are multiple options for enrolling a certificate. We're going to go through a couple of them here. Some of them we won't actually demonstrate, but we are going to take a look. So our next demo is just that. So here we are back in our demo environment, and we're going to use web enrollment to enroll for a certificate. Uh, one of your certification authorities you'll designate as a web enrollment certificate or a web enrollment provider. In this case, I'm using the same server. I have a single server instance in this case. And that's going to bring up this interface. This is web enrollment. Request a certificate, a user certificate. I, as a user, I, as a user, can only select a user certificate, and this website knows that I'm a user requesting one. I can submit an advanced request, which I could do on behalf of something else. But for now, we'll hold off on that. We'll come back to that in a minute. I want a user certificate. A little warning comes up that says that this website must be used in HTTPS. In order to complete certificate enrollment, the website for the CA must be configured to use HTTPS, and that is actually for the whole purpose of what we're doing. They want to make sure, they being Microsoft in this case, that when I as a user am requesting a certificate which is built for identity verification and encryption and non-repudiation and other security factors, they want to make sure that I'm getting that certificate and requesting that certificate in a secure manner. So I click OK, and right now there's no submit option. I'm not using SSL. So let's go back and we will add SSL. Same screen, click the request. This website is attempting to perform a digital certificate operation on your behalf, me the user. You should only allow known websites to perform these operations. In this case, this is my website. So yes, this time the submit option exists. There are more options for this certificate. We're not going to get anywhere near those details today. I click submit. Again, attempting to perform this operation on my behalf. And they've issued me a certificate. Now this certificate does not exist in the certificate store that we looked at earlier. And I'll bring that back up real quick. For my user account, and we'll open up personal certificates. We have the encrypting file system certificate from earlier. We have the original file recovery certificate. The one I was just issued has not been attached to me as a user on this computer yet. I have to install it. I click the link. it takes care of that for me. I now have, in this case, it's a user certificate, the pre-built template that's called user certificate. Here at the bottom where it says certificate template name. If it will let me expand that out. User. Now user and basic EFS, even though they're different templates, in this case you look at intended purposes, they're similar but not the same. The basic EFS certificate is for encrypting file system. The user certificate is for encrypting file system and additional functions. And that's the one I now have. And that is the demo on enrolling for a certificate via the web for a user. We're going to jump back into the PowerPoint presentation and pick up where we left off.
So administering certificate enrollment uh, to obtain a certificate using manual enrollment. This is a little bit different than the web enrollment we just saw, which was relatively automated. You create a request, submit a request, obtain approval, and retrieve it from the CA. What this would entail, and this is a process you may see with third-party certification authorities, is filling out a number of forms, a series of forms, creating a file. That file either gets pasted into, the contents of that file either get pasted into a box via a website or the file gets sent off, and that is your request, and that request gets put on a server waiting for an administrator to approve it. This can also be done in the methods we were just using. You submit it, an administrator has to approve it. Once they've approved it, you then go to that certification authority and pull that certificate down off of it and install it into your certificate store. There is a demo here for that as well. We'll jump right into that. So we're going to close this out. Nope. We're going to go back home in our web enrollment form. Request a certificate, very similar to what we did before, or submit an advanced one. So here, this is where you'll see the option, submit a certificate request by using a base 64 encoded CMC or PKCS number 10 file, or submit a renewal request by using a base 64 encoded PKCS number 7 file. These are generated through other certificate request mechanisms. I'm going to once again open up our MMC for personal certificates issued to my user account. All tasks, request new. I also have advanced create custom. Here, I can select the policy that I want to apply to get the certificate. I only have one policy. We're not going to go too deep into certificate enrollment policy. What template do I want to use? And again, this is a user, so I'm just going to use the user certificate template we used before. But in this instance, instead of submitting this directly to the certification authority, I'm going to put it into one of those formats just mentioned in the message. Click Next. All of my details are here. Click Next again. Where do I want to put my request file? And we'll call this certificate. Finish. No real feedback, but here's my request. This is now a file that can be used to request a certificate from a certification authority based on the criteria I entered. This is what a certificate request looks like. The reason I bring this up is because from time to time, depending on the configuration of the, the certification authority you're trying to get a certificate from, and this may pertain to third parties, you may have to actually copy and paste this text from the file into another window instead of submitting the file. Now, since we've done this, since we have the file here, we're going to go back to web enrollment one more time. Log in again. Request a certificate. Submit advanced. And here we're going to use that second link. Submit a certificate request using a file. It's going to ask me exactly what I just mentioned, which is not to attach the file, but to put the request directly into this box. I'm going to cheat a little bit and open up my desktop via the run line. Open that file back up. Copy its contents. Paste them into here. Again, it's a user template. And submit. And it's done. The CA has now issued me a new certificate based on a request generated externally and then copy and paste it into a request window in the web enrollment tool. This step 
Uh, we have a couple of options. I can download the certificate from this page. If I don't, for some reason, oh, I got my certificate, I don't need it, I just close this. I can still get that certificate from the certification authority snap-in because all issued certificates are tracked here. As an end user, I won't have access to this, but as an end user, if I've requested a certificate and then closed this window and I'm unable to download that certificate, I can have an administrator get me that information. You can actually see the request I just submitted right here at the end. User, there's an ID, a serial number, time submitted. And I can export this if I need to. I'm gonna download this for potential later use. And that is our demo on requesting via a file, a certificate. And we are on to the next slide, post demo. We did talk about administering certificate enrollment. This is what we just did. Creating, submitting, obtaining approval, and retrieving. In this case, the step we skipped was approval. We don't have the certificate template set up so that when a request is submitted, an administrator has to manually approve it. That is one difference. There is a demo here on how to administer requests. I'm gonna skip this demo in the interest of time. We've seen all the steps for, require, or for requesting and enrolling for certificates. I can say that once an, a request has been made in that certification authority window, you open up that snap-in, there's a pending requests folder. It's in that folder as an administrator that you would go to look at requests that have been submitted and not approved automatically or by another administrator and approve them and issue those certificates to those users or devices. Options for automating. So this relates to what we've just been talking about. I can select a number, well, I have a number of different options. As an administrator, I can tell a certificate template to allow users to enroll and approve that er enrollment, which we've seen. I can tell it that an administrator's approval is required, which we haven't seen, but we've talked about. Or I can go a step beyond the first option and tell my network, my domain, to automatically issue certificates of given types to given objects, computers or users or network devices, automatically without them specifically enrolling for those certificates. Uh, right here on this slide, we talk about it. A uh, group policy in my domain triggers an automatic request for a new computer or a new user. Auto enroll is enabled on the template from which the request certificate is created and it's issued automatically. Certificate revocation is what happens when I as an administrator decide that a certificate should no longer be valid. That could be for any number of reasons. A user no longer with the organization, a computer taken offline. There are various reasons for a certificate being revoked. Clients can ensure the certificate has not been revoked by using the following methods. The Online Certificate Status Protocol Responder Service, or the Online Responder, or the Certificate Revocation List. We saw, I'll actually jump to the next slide because it's a demo, and we'll go right into that demo real quick. So we're back here in the demo environment, and we're gonna take a look at Certificate Revocation as it applies to the tools we've already used. We have a certification authority. We've seen this tool a couple of times at this point. We have our issued certificates. This will be a good starting point for me. We have a number of certificates issued to administrator. In this case, a number of certificates that are essentially the same. And for whatever reason, we'll say that user has left the organization. Amicably, not amicably, under whatever circumstances. We wanna make sure that this certificate is no longer honored for its purpose. All tasks, revoke. Are you sure you wanna revoke it? Give us a reason and a date and a time. In this case, we can say change of affiliation. That user is no longer with this organization. And yes, the certificate vanishes from here and has now been placed into revoked certificates. What this means 
is that if that user were to attempt to log on to these systems and access encrypted information, decrypt an encrypted file, because this was an EFS certificate, it would not work. Because as soon as that operation is attempted, it's gonna check with the certification authority on the validity of the certificate being used to do that operation. The certification authority is going to look at this revocation and say that certificate's no longer valid, you don't get to do that. A good example of this where options are given to end users, if you have a website that is encrypted with SSL or is using the SSL protocol and does not have a valid certificate, you'll get a warning window saying this certificate is invalid. And there may be for any number of reasons. There are a number of possible reasons that that happens on a relatively regular basis. But in that instance, you have an option to continue anyways using an invalid certificate or stop the operation you're attempting to, to do. And that is the end of the revocation demo. That's how you revoke a certificate and how the server stores information about those revoked certificates. We're going to get into further details in just a little while. So now you've seen how to revoke certificates and monitor or manage revoked certificates. That actually wraps up the module on Active Directory Certificate Services. We've covered the various different tools used to manage. We've covered the installation, again, very high level, what it is, what it does, how it works. So that concludes Active Directory Certificate Services. We've seen the tools. We've gleaned some ideas on what they're for, how they're used, how they're managed. Again, as an overview, the many, many, many further details on Active Directory Certificate Services. Like domain services, it is a very deep topic full of days of its own content. And hopefully you keep monitoring Microsoft Virtual Academy right here and we will be providing more content on this topic in the future.